I'm Lisa Keating with Encino Mom here in Malibu, California with Ibarian X Carrillo. And we're going to talk this morning about his new book, Chasing the Light. Welcome. Thank you. It's great to be here with oh, you this morning. Thank you so much. Oh, your hands are warm. <laughs> <laughs> it's winter at the beach. It's beautiful, isn't it? No, yeah, it's gorgeous. Tell me a little bit about your new book. Well, it's called Chasing the Light. It's about my approach to seeing light and using it for my photography. Uh, I've taught a lot of workshops and the workshops were based on this whole idea in terms of looking for the light first and having that inform what you do with your camera because a lot of people will photograph a, a person or an object and will never take consideration of the most important thing which is which is light and if you can see light then you can make better photographs. You take a, a, a picture of an object and on an ordinary day and it would just be a picture of that object. But if you take a look at what's happening in the light, if the light is in the very late afternoon, it has that nice warm glow and it's coming from a direction, not only does it give you a sort of a, a lovely color to the light itself, but it adds some shadow to the opposing side and gives that object shape and texture. And all of a sudden that object is transformed just as a result of the light that you're using. Why are you here? Wow, that's a big question. Yeah, well, you know, we're at the ocean. What are you going to do? You know, I think, I think part of it, in terms of why I photograph, is just to be able to show people the ordinary things in life and see how extraordinary they can be. I think that's what I do primarily with a camera. Like, like you said, I take pictures of things that people walk past that they would never give a, a second thought to, and all of a sudden they look at it in ways that they never would have and I think part of that part of I think why I'm here is 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 to serve that purpose one of the things I do when I'm teaching is I'm encouraging people that to, to slow down because everyone is in such a rush and I think when you have when you have a camera it can be along the lines of a meditative practice where it really forces you to be present right in the moment nothing about what happened yesterday or happened a year before or what's what has to happen tomorrow, all the things you have to do. It really requires you to be really present in that instant and really seeing and connecting to what you're seeing. And for me, that's one of the best things about it because my mind is like racing with all these different thoughts. But when I'm out shooting, Woo! in those best moments, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm right there. I think that your, your photography is certainly not beginning. It's, it's, it's uh, art, Yeah. right? But for people who see beautiful things and want to capture that, available light, what, what can they do? I think one of the first things you need to do is get comfortable with your camera. I think if you can get comfortable with the, with the buttons and the controls, you, you're able to get your mind off the camera and focus more on what you're, what you're seeing and what you're experiencing. Uh, you don't need to know every bell and whistle on the camera, but get to the point where you're comfortable enough handling it so you're not preoccupied with it. And then secondly, I think it's just important to take more than one photograph. A lot of people take one photograph and go, okay, I got I it, and walk it. away. And actually, you really have to take a lot of photographs. Yes, it's, yes. If you find something, that first shot, like more than likely, is not going to be it. So get, get closer, move back, um, try different angles. Don't just do it at eye level. Shoot over it, get down to the ground and really explore because you'll find you'll have like a dozen different photographs of that same one and you'll probably find one that really works and it's only that process of shooting that many and comparing them that you learn what makes what a good photograph okay digital versus film where are you i shoot both primarily i shoot digital largely because of the convenience but every once in a while i'll, I'll put film through uh, a camera just because it forces me to slow down. With digital you can change, shoot thousands and with film you're either 36 exposures or 12 if you're using a medium format camera and it really forces me to just be really methodical and 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 I don't have the image on the back of the LCD anymore. That's right, that's right and you don't you don't know if you've got it, you have to feel that inside. Yeah. <clears throat> so. Okay, so how about your third tip? My third tip would be just slow down. Slowly. I think people are just in way too rushed to, to take their picture and, and move on. It's just like, you know, people go on a vacation or they do something and they, and they take pictures and they forget to experience what's happening right in front of them. And I think the more you are involved in being in the experience, 
not only will the photographs be better, but you'll enjoy yourself a lot more. Because ultimately, true. photography should be fun. You know, I, I, I still write reviews and evaluations of equipment, so I would constantly have equipment coming through the, coming through the office. Oh, so what's your new favorite? Well, I'm using the Olympus E5 right now, which is a brand new camera. It's not even on the market yet. Oh my goodness. And Olympus sent it to me to, uh, to evaluate, and I've been writing a, a review on my, on my blog at, uh, uh, at thecandidframe.com and altadinaphoto.com. If people go there, they'll see not only uh, reviews on this particular camera, but a lot of my pictures that I've taken over the years. But uh, I always like playing with, with the new toys, and that's one of the benefits of what I do. I think that probably the biggest advice I can give people, regard, regardless of what they're shooting, is to pay a little more attention to the background, because oftentimes it's the things that are behind the subject that, that cause the problems in the images, because they're distractions. Okay, they're, let's turn around. Let's see what we have behind us. Well, we got a beautiful oh. scene here, you know, <laughs> so it's hard to complain shot. with that. But, you know, we don't have trees growing out of our heads. We don't have somebody in a red jacket you know, doing jumping jacks in the background and, you know, the eye being led back to that. So I think we get, when you compose a shot, you sort of fix, you're so fixated on your subject, you put them in the frame, and then later on you get the picture and you go, I didn't see that. Because if you're in a rush, you just raise the camera and, and snap the picture and only realize that there was some stuff in there you really didn't want later. Not everybody can be, you know, Richard Avedon or, or Henri Cartier-Busson, you know, but each person has a real unique vision. And they can have fun with a camera and really kind of reveal how they see the world in their own photographs. Yeah. You know, and, and if you can do that and you're happy with it and you can get people to react to your photographs in much the same way that you reacted when you saw something wonderful, then I feel like I've accomplished not just something as a photographer, but as a teacher. Where's the best place for people to go to find out more about you and your book? Best place to go is, is go to thecandidframe.com and there they'll find links to my photography, my photo blog, my workshops, and the book, and also a podcast in which uh, I interview photographers about what they do. Fantastic. So that's www.thecandidframe.com. Thecandidframe.com. Hey, Barry Nix, thank you so much. Well, thank it's you. It's such a pleasure to have you today. Appreciate it. That's it for me. I'm Encino Mom, Lisa Keating. See you next time.